Hello and welcome to another video. In today's episode we are taking another look at the Arch installation process and we are taking some effort to try to understand what is going on there. So today we are going to take a look at updating the clock, the time date CTL command. So there is a step after connecting to the internet which we did in the last video, so if you have not checked out yet, that one yet, then why don't you go back and take a look? And then we need to update the system clock before we start doing any persistent modification to our system, such as partitioning the disk. So you can see here that until this point, everything was done on the live environment. So we booted the live environment, we set up the keyboard layout that's only for this session. We connected to the internet that is only for this session. We also verified the boot mode. That is, of course, the information we got from the boot mode we will use later during the partitioning and, uh, uh, and uh, installing the bootloader. So at that part, that will be important. So if we take a look at the installation guide so you can see that I did not make it up myself. Of course, uh, connecting to the internet is followed by updating the system clock and you can see this is only like four lines in the ArchWiki. Why is this guy making a long video about four lines in the ArchWiki? Well, why not? Because people say that installing Arch Linux is a good experience, it's a good thing to learn more about your system. So if you install Arch Linux to learn about your system, then yeah, you can definitely learn something about the system clock. And I promise you, this episode is going to be much more interesting than what you would expect from the title and from the topic of today. So time date CTL is the command that is uh, suggested here. You can just set NTP true and uh, well, let your internet connection be used to uh, synchronize the clock to get a accurate system clock before you do anything that is persistent on your system. That's the point here. So if that's the only thing that interests you then well you got also already two and a half minutes in this video so you can just go but if you are more interested in this then let's take a look at the time date CTL commands manual page on the internet because you can find manual pages on the internet luckily. So this command is basically gives you a full fledged tool to uh, do everything concerning your time keeping on your computer. You can get the status and if we are already here why don't we check the status in the console. So time date CTL, CTL is one word and we just type in status it will tell us the local time, the universal time, RTC time, our time zone, is the system clock synchronized, is the NTP service active and we can also say time date CTL show it shows a little different format but it's, it says uh, so it talks about um, the variables like uh, machine readable form so if you take a look at the manual it's basically the same information as you got before but it's not human readable format it is a machine readable format if you need to use it as uh, some kind of input for some script you can do that you can use this to set the time set the time zone list all your time zones. So of course during the installation process setting the time zone is not necessary. It's uh, almost you could say it's a waste of time but if you are working on your final machine or your install system and you don't use any uh, graphical interface then it is a good idea to be familiar with at least setting the time zone. So setting the time is not going to be important if your machine is facing the internet because it you will use the automatic uh, synchronization but maybe you want to use the time zone you want to set up the time zone by yourself 
and so for that you can use the list time zones command to list your time zones so time date ctl list time zones will give you a list of your the possible time zones that you can just happily scroll through and then you can basically say time date ctl set time zone and maybe you want to set something like asia slash i don't know let's say tokyo and then you can just set up your time zone to that if you want to of course same thing is true for the live environment so i already booted up my system in qmu so time date ctl set time zone and then you can just maybe europe uh, and let's say amsterdam and now if you say time date ctl show it will tell you that your time zone is amsterdam and it will show you the time in amsterdam i guess which is uh, cet you can say cet is central european times so we already talked a lot about all these different concepts so i wanted to show you what these uh, things are that we are talking about so some of these probably were uh, familiar for you like utc local time and the time zone now let's just clarify for those viewers who want some more clarity on this so utc is basically <laughs> a very weird uh abbreviation so it is coordinated universal time the one why is not why isn't it cut well because the french said that it's actually it's temps universal coordonné so it should have been tuc actually so well because neither the english nor the french can be right on this issue it became utc a very weird uh, abbreviation but that's what it is and of course local time is your time wherever you are on the planet because you know earth is actually round and not round like a plate it's a round like a ball it's a globe for your flat earthers out there so we adjust this time because utc is uh, very good if you want every computer to have the same time all over the world is very good but as a human you want your noon like a 12 p.m when the sun is up on the sky and like 12 a.m when you know it's the middle of the night it's midnight so based on that we add or subtract some hours to the utc time based on your location on the globe and also some people like to use daylight saving time in the summer so uh, you don't get that uh, bright early in the morning uh, that's how was the reason <laughs> so you can sleep in easier in the summertime and so time zones come from minus 12 to plus 14 which is a weird thing because you would say like 24 hours around the globe so that should be like minus 12 and plus 12 but actually what's happening here so if you go to wikipedia there is a very nice uh uh, article about the uh, history and like the etymology and the use of the UTC so it is a very complicated mechanism it has uh, basically um, you know additional seconds or sometimes less seconds like leap seconds which is a very complicated concept don't read this unless you are very interested in the timekeeping but there is this very nice time zone map here which is a pu public domain so we can use it here full screen whatever <laughs> courtesy of the united states uh, federal government you can see like this is the weird thing here kiribati has plus 13 and plus 14 time zones where like hawaii has minus 10 the reason for that so hawaii has minus 10 because 
you know, it's part of the United States, so it wants to keep like two, three, four, five hour difference from uh, territories in the United States, or rather states in the United States. But Kiribati is actually economically more tied to Australia, which is in like these time zones. So, and like these uh, island nations. So for them, it is better to be closer by time, especially because of the day. So they had like troubles because it was, uh, or like if you are in the minus 10 here, it's uh, still Friday, but you are in the plus 10 here, so it's already Saturday. And uh, when it's uh, Monday here, it's still Sunday here, so it had a trouble with banking, I guess. So like the banks were not open, <laughs> well, you would expect. So instead of being in minus 10, they decided to be in plus 14. The more you know. And of course, the biggest... Uh, time zone here is almost whole Europe is in this central European time zone the plus one so you can see like Spain is well uh, on the west to the meridian but they are still in plus one which would be like the ideal place for plus one is around somewhere here I guess yeah on this line and uh, Spain is in plus one because Franco liked Hitler and wanted him to be in the same time zone as uh, Nazi Germany at least that's what <laughs> what the story is. I, I, I'm not 100% sure it's true. And that's what they say why Spain is in plus one. Even though, you know, even France, you could make an argument for France being in like the zero time zone. But time is uh, sometimes more about like uh, commerce and stuff like that, not geography. So... That's what I wanted to talk about time zones in a video about Linux. So, of course, this is the timekeeping part. It is very interesting, but what is also interesting and what is a little more important, I guess, for us in the computer world is this RTC and the system clock uh, kind of uh, this distinction. So RTC is the real time clock, which is hardware clock or CMOS clock, which is built into your computer. It is uh, basically battery driven. So even if the main power source of your computer is dried off, it's plugged outside of the wall, your laptop lithium battery is dead, etc. It's probably still working and keeping the time. This uh, can be queried by the HW clock command in Linux, but what will happen is hardware, this is like hardware clock dash dash show, oh, I should show you actually the console. So if I just type in this command and press enter, you will see that we cannot access the hardware clock because you have to be a root to ex actually access uh, hardware clock even for just showing purposes. Even if just you were just what? Sorry. H W C L O C K show. That's what you should type. Pseudo hardware clock. H W C L O C K. So you can see this is the hardware clock, and uh, interestingly, it already uh, has the time zone information in it. I'm not really 100% sure how. Like this, mine is plus nine hour. How does my hardware knows? So they say that like this new uh, UF, UEFI type systems sometimes implement um, a time zone feature, but the old BIOS systems did not have time zone. It just uh, had just you know date and uh, hour, minute, second, and so same goes for QMU. But here in the Arch ISO, so of course if you boot the live environment you are always a root so you can just hardware clock show I will show you the hardware clock and I already set up Amsterdam so this emulated system thinks that we are in the Central European uh, time zone okay and time date CTL which we just talked about is the command to deal with the uh, system clock and the system clock. What is the system clock? So what happens is that actually accessing the real uh, time clock the hardware clock of your computer is very slow uh, 
So for that reason, the Linux kernel keeps uh, the time by itself, by uh, a software means, and that time uh, can be accessed using, this is a system, the accessory, this time date CDL, as you can see from the, uh, from this here. So, uh, where do you, can you see this? You can see it here, it's part of systemd, it's part of core slash systemd, and, uh, well, it's Arch. <laughs> yeah, it's in Arch Linux. So, of course, this is the important thing, which is in the installation procedure is set local RTC to 1, or to set local RTC to true. So here it says that set, what? Set NTP to, sorry. Sorry, set NTP. I should be talking about set NTP. This is it. Set local RC, RTC, this is a, something else. I will talk about this later. So NTP is network time protocol, so that's what you need to turn on for you to enable the synchronization. So if we take a look at our QMU with the emulated uh, Arch, is Arch ISO running here, you can see that NTP synchron. So let's go back time, date, CDL, um, not show, but what was the other command? Status, uh, status. You can see that system clock synchronized, no NTP service inactive. So, of course, we need an internet connection for that. So, let's uh, ping www.archlinux.org. So, make sure we have ping running there. Okay, can I control C here? Okay, thank you. So, now Let's uh, say time, date, CDL, and set uh, NTP, set NTP true. What set NTP one? That's what I need to do. Uh, NTP set to one. If zero, then the uh, system is configured to maintain now, it takes the boolean argument controls whether network time synchronization is active and enabled. Why did I confuse it always with the other command? Sorry. So now that we set it up, let's go back to the status and now you can see the system clock synchronized and NTP service is active. So that's what you need to see after you synchronize the clock. And uh, so you can uh, just check how the synchronization is going with this time sync status command. So let's do that. Time date CDL time sync dash status. You can see that what is the server that you are synchronizing with and some other information like distance and offset and delay and jitter, which are things I have no idea actually what they mean. But this is not that important. The important thing is that it's turned on and your computer gets the uh, accurate time from the internet now. And so, before we conclude this presentation, let's uh, take a look at some other things. The troubles with Windows, because uh, what it is, uh, it is not a real Linux themed video if you don't bash on Windows. And I don't think I ever bashed on Windows, but this is a good time for me to start. Because what's going on is by default, Windows keeps the hardware clock in local time. So your hardware clock is set to local time, while Linux uses UTC, so it, it will cause you problems with dual booting, of course. You will find a great source of information on the ArchWiki about this under the system time article and it will tell you that uh, you should <laughs> you should set uh, your time standard 
to the coordinated universal time. You can set it to use local time. This is time and date CD, I'll set local hours TC. This is the command that I always uh, co uh, confused in the last part, unfortunately. So you can use this to adjust your system to use the local time. And I was when I was a Windows user, so I used Windows for a very long time. I, I don't know, 15 years maybe. And when I first started reading about Linux and I was like, oh my god, what is this confusing stuff? Like I made my bootable USB stick for Arch Linux and if I boot that up, will this confuse my system? Why can't we just all use the local time in the BIOS? But, well, actually, it's very stupid to use the local time in BIOS. And nowadays you can use UTC in Windows by turning a bit in the registry or uh, in, in another uh, whatever so you, you know so it's a value to one from zero but why is it important so why should why if you are du dual booting why you should force windows to use the utc instead of forcing linux to use local time there's a very good article here on the internet ibm pc real-time clock should run in ut <laughs> by marcus Kahn. And this is a very old article, and basically the problems are mostly with daylight saving time. So, of course you could say, like, if you move your computer from one time zone to another, you can just, you know, change the time zone and the clock at the same time. So, it will, if you want to calculate back universal time. So, because you need to know universal time. So there is no going around it. If you are on the internet, you communicate with other computers and the other computers, well, they work in UTC because that's what is universal for around the whole planet. And even outside the planet, like the uh, International Space Station uses UTC. So you need to be able to calculate UTC. So you won't go to another time zone. You change the time zone and uh, that simultaneously changes your hardware clock so you are relative in the same UTC. The UTC is the same when you try to calculate it back from local time using time zone. That's clear. What the problem with daylight savings times is that daylight saving times is during the summer you slide your clock to one direction and then when summer ends you slide it back in the other direction and what happens is you repeat an hour. So in Hungary, if I remember well, you turn your clock from 3 a.m. back to 2 a.m. Which means you have two hours <laughs> at the same, you know, you have two one-hour periods which are the same in your local time. So there is no way in which you can unambiguously calculate your actual uh, UTC time back from your local time. And because there are these switches with the daylight switching, daylight saving time, that sometimes you add plus one hour and then some time passes and you don't add the plus one hour anymore. If you have a multi-boot system and your system clock's r running in a, a local time zone, you boot up one system, it realizes that, oh, the time has come to switch the clock since the last uh, boot so it switches the clock then you reboot the other operating system it also says oh the time has come since the last reboot to change the system clock so it changes the system clock again and so this is not good the thing is read this article it's very interesting and so it's uh, talking about the current support status in windows in a very old like almost 20 year old uh, time frame the latest edition is a uh, well, it's already six years old, it's 2014. Basically, according to the Arch Wiki, it works now. So if you are dual booting Linux and Windows, you can change Windows to handle the uh, system clock in UTC. But it should be default. And, okay, the interesting thing is, <laughs> it's a really funny thing is that basically what they say is, the Microsoft folks appear to think 
that this thing UTC in the built-in BIOS config menu is way too scary for mere mortals. So basically, the reason why Microsoft wanted to use the 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 the, the RTC, the hardware clock, in local time instead of UTC, is for the practical reason that when you boot up your computer and press delete to enter the BIOS menu and you see like a UTC time and maybe you live in America with like minus, I don't know, minus six is your time zone and you see like your hardware clock is like running six hours fast or six hours, you know, ahead, you would panic, apparently, that's what <laughs> the reason was and this was more important than how, like actually on the internet you actually need to use UTC. <laughs> yeah, so this is interesting kind of historical tidbit there for you. So this is uh, why you should uh, not keep RTC in local time. Do not do this. It's better to have monotonously increasing time also it's like not switching it back and forth, just always going up, 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 up for your logging and especially if you need, uh, like, sec you want uh, to be secure, you want to see, like, everything, how they happened in order, that's basically the only solution is to have your time always going forward, never backwards. And that's uh, the conclusion of this presentation. And... Uh, Thank you for bearing with me on this journey in the <laughs> in the empire of uh, time zones and the mysteries of timekeeping. So, more technical videos are of course coming up. So, if you are not yet subscribed but are amused by my musings or just interested in the more in-depth analysis of the Arch Linux install process, then subscribe to the channel. And check out also the playlist, which is for this purpose. And also check the next episode once it's come up. And leave a like if you enjoy the content. And leave a comment with your favorite shenanigans according or concerning time zones and daylight saving times. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.